let's figure out our key signature so we can figure out the notes in the scale. So as always, we need to use our relative major scale to find the key signature for our minor scale. It's just a super helpful technique. It means you gotta memorize half the key signatures. So for moving between relative major and minor, there's one simple trick you need to know, and that is three half steps. When you're going from minor to major, you go up three half steps. When you're going from major to minor, you go down three half steps. So because we are in the key of D minor, trying to figure out the relative major, we're going to go up three half steps. So three half steps from D. Let's take a look at the keyboard. D sharp, E, F. That's it. So the key signature for D minor is the same thing as the key signature for F major. The key signature for F major is one flat, just a B flat. That's it. So if you can remember B flat, you are ready to move on to your tonic triad and inversions. Let's build that tonic triad. So tonic just means one. So we're going to play the first note of the scale, which is a D. And then to build a triad, a chord, we have to stack our thirds. So we go from D, and then a third above that is an F, and a third above that is an A. That's it. So this is our tonic triad in the key of D minor. D, F, and A. Let's play the tonic triad in its root position. So we have D, F, and A with a 1, 3, and a 5. Now we are going to invert the chord, so we're going to flip it. So the D goes to the top. So now the bottom note is an F, the middle note is an A, and then the top note is a D. We're going to press down this chord in first inversion. Now we're going to flip it one more time. So the bottom note here is an F, but now the F is going to go to the top. So our F is on top, the D is in the middle, and the thumb is at the bottom. We're going to play this with a 1, 3, and a 5. Now we're going to flip it again, but you're going to notice it's the same chord that we started with. So the bottom note is a D, the middle note is an F, and the next note is an A. We're going to press this down, 1, 3, and 5. Now we're just going to do the exact same thing we did, but backwards. So the top note is an A. Now this is going to be the bottom note. So A, D, and F with a 1, 3, and a 5. And then we're going to flip it again. So the top note of F is the bottom note. So F, A, and D with a 1, 2, and a 5. And then flip it again right back to the beginning. D, F, and A, 1, 3, and 5. Now the left hand, D, F, and A, five, three, and one. Let's flip through these inversions. So the top note is now a D, the middle note is an A, and the bottom note is an F. This is a one, three, and a five. We're gonna flip the chord again. So now our top note is an F, the middle note is a D, and the bottom note is an A. We play this with a one, a two, and a five. And then we're gonna flip it one more time. D, F, and A, one, three, five. Now we're gonna go back down. So the A on top is at the bottom. A, D, and F. We play this with the one, two, and five. We're gonna flip it again. So now the bottom note is that F. So we have F, A, and D. We're gonna play that with a one, a three, and a five. And now we're gonna flip it again, right back to where we started. D, F, and A, one, three, and five. Alright, so before putting your hands together for the chord progressions, make sure that you can feel good hand depth on the keyboard. The number one thing that I think messes up students with this is that like sideways hand thing. They'll like reach for the chord this way instead of just playing in. Remember the piano is a three dimensional instrument. There's depth to how we play the notes. So you can move your hands in and out on the keyboard. As always though, maintain that good wrist posture, right? By moving in and out, I don't mean here and then here, but my hand always stays rounded 
and in a good position to play the next note. Remember, less movement is the best movement. If you feel like you are ready to put it together, try the next exercise. Now let's build our primary chord progression. So we started with our tonic triad, the D, F, and A, our one chord. Now we have to build two more chords, our subdominant, the four chord, and the dominant, the five chord. So the subdominant, the four chord, is built on the fourth note of the scale. So let's take a look at the scale. We have a D, an E, an F, and a G. So that means that our four chord is built off of a G. Let's stack our thirds or our skips to figure out what those notes are going to be. So we start with a G. The note above that on the staff is a B, but do you remember the key signature from the beginning? It's not a B, but a B flat. And then a third above that is a D. So we have a G, a B flat, and a D. This is our subdominant. Now we need to build our dominant seven chord. So that's built on the fifth note of the scale. So if the fourth note is a G, the fifth note needs to be an A. Now all we gotta do is stack our thirds. So we go A, a third above that is a C, a third above that is an E, and then a third above that is a G. But because we are in minor, we need to add our leading tone. So the leading tone is always a half step below the root of our scale. It's pretty simple. So what's a half step below D? Well, if we take a look at the keyboard, one half step below D is a C sharp. It's not a D flat, it's a C sharp because we write scales stepwise. And if you take a look, the second note of your dominant seven chord is a C. This is how we know that the leading tone and the chord line up. So we need to make this C a C sharp. So the chord is as follows, A, C sharp, E, and G. Now we're gonna play those three chords in a progression. So let's start with that right hand in root position. D, F, and A. So one, three, and five. Now we're gonna open our hand to get to the next two notes. So the third finger opens up to G. Make sure that that hand opens up above the black keys. And then your pinky is going to be playing the B flat. Make sure you have good hand depth. Your hand doesn't turn sideways or anything like that. Nice parallel to the keyboard hand shape round. Now we're gonna Compress the shape so we go back to our D minor chord, D, F, and A, and now we're gonna play our dominant chord. So our thumb is going to open out and we're actually gonna move our hand in on the keyboard because our thumb is short and so is the C sharp. We're gonna put that C sharp on our thumb on top of each other and then the fourth finger is already over G and the fifth finger is already over A. So we're gonna press these three down for our dominant seven and now we're gonna go back to our root position D minor chord. D, F, and A. Now the left hand. So we are going to play with our hand in root position again. 5, 3, and 1 over D, F, and A. All right, now we're going to press this down. We're going to open our hand into our subdominant. So we keep the pinky over D, second finger over G, and because our thumb needs to play the B flat, we move our hand in on the keys. Don't turn your hand all sideways, just play in on the keys. Good. Now we're going to close the shape again. Keep decent depth. So we get the D, F, and the A over 5, 3, and 1. And now we're gonna open that pinky to C sharp. You really don't have to move your hand if you're playing with good depth here. The pinky just opens up to C sharp, your second finger's over G, and your thumb is over A. We're gonna press it down, and then we go right back to our tonic triad, D, F, and A, five, three, and one. Before putting your hands together, make sure, make sure 
that your hands move as a unit and that they move well across the keyboard. It's fine if you gotta stick with hands separate for a little bit, but we need to cultivate good movement patterns and strategies. So make sure that your hands move as a unit, not one kind of at a time. And make sure you don't have that down and around kind of thing, but we move in those little arcs from chord to chord, all right? It doesn't have to be perfect, but make sure that you can at least think about these things before trying to play hands together. But if you feel like you got it, you're ready to try hands together. Now let's build our tonic triads arpeggio. So we've already played the tonic triad, the arpeggio, which is broken notes. The important thing here is the hand shape. Make sure that you start with the open hand shape before playing the notes. So let's try the right hand and we're gonna introduce that open hand shape. I'm gonna put my right hand thumb over D, second finger over F, and third finger over A. This is my open hand shape. Stretch your hand, not uncomfortably, but you know, keep it open. Remember, the less you move, the better. So we're gonna press down our thumb on D, that second finger on F, and as the third finger is playing the A here, we're gonna tuck our thumb underneath and slightly turn our wrist to the side, and the thumb is gonna land on D, and it opens up into the next three notes. So the second finger's on F, third finger's on A, and then we press our pinky down on D. Now we're gonna go back down the same way that we came. So third finger on A, second finger on F, the thumb plays on the D and then we tuck and turn over that third finger to A and then the hand slides into the next two notes. Second finger on F, thumb on D. All right, now the left hand. So same thing with the open hand shape. Open hands for arpeggios are a must. That's why we do the exercises. If your hands aren't open, you're not getting all that you can from the exercise. So left hand open position. We're gonna put our pinky on a D, our third finger on F, second finger on A, and then our thumb is gonna be the D, the octave above. Keep this open hand shape. Now that you feel comfortable in the position, we're gonna play the notes. So we press down the pinky on D, third finger on F, second finger on A, and thumb on D. As we're pressing down this thumb though, we're gonna cross over that third finger to F, and then the hand slides into the next two notes. So then we have an A with the second finger, and a D with the thumb. Now we're gonna go back down. So as our hand is in this position, we keep it here. The second finger plays an A, third finger plays an F, and we tuck and turn under the thumb goes to D. Second finger plays an A, third finger plays the F, and then the pinky plays the D. So before playing hands together, make sure that you are comfortable with that side-to-side -side motion of the wrist, but not dropping those wrists below the white parts of the keyboard as much. As you're playing, the hands need to work as a unit together, and they also need to remain stable over the keyboard. Very often I'll kind of see this like movement between every note. You know, you want a stable bass in the arpeggio. And if you're having trouble, that just means you need to stick to hands separate to really drill that motor pattern. Though if you feel like you've done enough work and you think you can try the hands together, go for it on the next exercise.
that is a wrap for the key of D minor. I hope you learned something good. Don't forget, like, comment, subscribe. Let me know what you thought of the video. Definitely check out the link to the shop below. I always, always adding some new stuff to there. Highly appreciate any commentary and feedback as well for any new designs you think may be dope. Let me know. So, as always, keep up the practice and stay powerful, y'all.